fun. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm the real Randy Chavez coming at you today with a VV Omi Einstein of Wall Street update video. <laughs> you guys, oh yeah, take my water? Thank you. You guys, if you're new, welcome, if not welcome back. So, what brings you to Comic Con today? You know what, actually, I have a, I'm coming out with an NFT. Check it out. Oh. And we're launching a toy here at the Martian Toy Booth. It's called El Toro, the bull of the Einstein of Wall Street. And we're doing a pre-sale on the Einstein of Wall Street toy that's coming out probably in January. So that's kind of why I'm here. You know what, I this is a little bit foreign for me, right? Although I have a lot of friends. Left Tokyo at Toy Tokyo is a good friend. Uh, Aaron at Martian Toys, people from Funko. So this has been a part of my world a little bit, but it's a little bit out of the box. I'm glad you're promoting your products here. This is literally the grandest stage of them all, New York it Comic Con. It is one of the grandest, yes. Yeah. This Next Sandiego. to where I work, That's true. which is the grandest of them all. So what? Uh, there's a lot of people that don't like NFTs. I, I for one, love them. I obviously cover VV a lot, which we just talked about. Uh, what attracted you to NFTs? And what, you know what? What do you see in the future? So look, I, I sort of I got involved in NFTs a while ago, like a year ago. I got involved with Boss Beauties, one of the first ones that launched last September. I'm close to the guy Wisby, who had one of the greatest ones on Nifty Gateway. And then the uh, War of the Bull, the uh, Wall Street Bulls, yeah. which was a offshoot of the Wall Street Pets, the degenerate community I remember. that is basically attacking Wall Street. So I kind of figured out why not embrace these crazy degenerate bastards rather than sort of keep them away from Wall Street. So I kind of got involved on that. And uh, one of the uh, Boss Beauties, the reason I sort of got into it was I love causes. I like people with a mission. And I saw that millions of NFTs launched. You know, I know that probably one out of 100 are going to stay there. And I kind of examined what is it in an NFT that's going to give it sustainability. It's going to be what are those utility? What's the cause? And since I do have my own utility, being educating people, financial literacy, financial education, analyzing the markets, I thought if I can get in, I have this brand, right? The Einstein of Wall Street, which is world renowned. Everybody knows it. I thought if I take that, and I get some cool artwork around it, and then I take the utility and do a Discord around what now I give away for free, but I can do it, I can charge for a private Discord, then we can do some charity stuff, we can get a lot of different people involved. So um, that's what I did. My man Trippy Pins here. We actually, we took, I'll show it to you. We took the uh, old Wall Street flipping coin, right, back in the old days on Wall Street, if there was a dispute in the crowd, right? We would actually have a governor come in, you'd flip a coin and you had to live by it. So I thought, how cool would it be? I think that the NFTs that are gonna have some sustainability are gonna be things that have physical, physical things to it. So I invented the new uh, New York Stock Exchange flipping coin. It's got the stocks, DoorDash, Shopify, all the cool new stocks on it. It's got a bull and a bear. So we're gonna be selling these. We're launching them here. And so, you know what? That attracts me. If you can take a platform like NFTs, raise some capital, use it for charity, use it for education, and sell some super cool art with a crazy guy like me on it, that's worth getting involved in. Yeah. So you obviously are building a lot of your own IP, that own intellectual property is going to be worth a lot. Uh, what do you think about Disney and Marvel getting into the space with VV, putting uh, Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse on the blockchain? Is that one of your one out of a hundred that has staying power? You know what, it's got to. Look, obviously these brands are super, super powerful. And they have, they have they're going to be here forever and ever. And I look, I know lots of different businesses where you've got scammers and hackers and a lot of stuff out there that is not real. And people taking with brand of iconic brands and messing with them. So I think that's the greatest way to show the provenance of Disney to continue it into the future. And so, yeah, I'm behind it 100%. These are things we grew up with, right? Yeah. At least I did. Look, I'm older than you guys. Although, you know, I'm 137 years old. I look good for my age. But, you know, those are the brands we grew up with. Like, and I think they will, they'll go into the future forever and ever. So, yeah, absolutely. Why not put some re reality to them and make some money? Yeah. So, I know you can't talk about uh, any individual stocks, but the market at large, what do you think when things in the world happen, like the Nord Stream pipeline, uh, being sabotaged and the market's reacting positively to that bearish news. I don't think the market's reacting positively to that news at all. You have to realize that there's so many moving parts right now, yeah. right? You've got a world coming out of COVID, right? You've got a world with major supply chain issues. You've got a world that we seem to have forgotten it. But two and a half years ago, Comic-Con was not here. 
this place was shut down. We were all locked in our freaking homes, banging on plates at seven o'clock at night, you know. And look, the world's had challenges over time, historically and whatnot. So at the end of the day, millions of people died. Millions of people's lives were changed. The world came to a complete standstill. The Federal Reserve printed trillions of dollars, which I'm a fan of because I think if we didn't do that, we'd be all on bread lines right now. But the amount of moving parts and the pieces to the puzzle, right, that are our lives right now, we've got a war going on with Russia that could become a nuclear confrontation. You've got, you know, major inflation. They love talking about gas at $5. Nobody wants to talk about it at three fifty. We're getting a bit of a handle on that. You've got supply chain issues. You've got a labor market that's batshit crazy. Nobody wants to go back to work. Yeah. You've got 10 million jobs that people don't want to take because they're too fucking lazy hanging out in their pajamas, not wanting to get back to work. So the market is reacting to madness. The market is reacting to a world that we don't know. There's no playbook for any of this. So I would never say that the market is reacting to any one of these things on any given day. The market is reacting to, they're hanging on the words of Jay Powell. They're hanging on the, 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 the hack of what happened in Nord Stream. They're hanging on all these different moving parts. But to think that we can analyze and know which thing moved the market which way, I think is irresponsible. So you think that not a lot of these are priced in yet? You think that when Ukraine I flies, think the term priced in is long gone. Okay. You know, that used to make sense when, when the world was a little bit different, when there still weren't so many moving parts. To say anything's priced in when you've got 20 different things going on, think of a puzzle, right? The old days world was a, a five piece puzzle. Now the world and the economics of the world, right, are a thousand piece puzzle. And every one of those pieces has major significance in what we have, the market reacts to it. Whether it's labor, inflation, recession, bonds, right? COVID, uh, 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 all those things, a war with Russia, right? Nuclear confrontation. These are all things that are going to affect the market in so many different ways. Go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted your question. Oh, no, it's okay. When, when you have Ukraine applying to be part of NATO, do you think that helps or hurts us going toward a nuclear confrontation? You know what? Look, we can. I don't want to talk politics. Yeah. I obviously think that that Ukraine as a major world country with people, right? We, we, you know, that who were attacked inexcusably by a global power, right? Should absolutely, and we've looked, we've gone on to support them financially the best way we can. Do I think that if we let them into NATO, it's, I think we need to stand up against Russia. Okay, absolutely, fuck them, the sons of bitches. And so if we end up having to go into a confrontation, in order to support this country of people who have been devastated for no reason, so be it. Okay. And uh, in the next couple of months, again, I know you can't have any individual stock picks, yeah. but is this something that you're you're bullish on? Uh, is this something that you might short the markets in general, or are you long? So look, I can't tell you what I, th I have no opinion about the market. Whether the market, you want to ask me, is the market going up or down? The answer is yes. It's the greatest answer. I'm the only guy telling the goddamn truth. Right? I said it on every news station that I've been on. Is the market going up or down? The answer is yes. And I'm the only one who's been right. Okay. What does the future look like? Hist I, I, all I can say, I will analyze the market historically. And historically, over time, the S&P has given us 10% a year. Over time, the market's done nothing but go up with a couple of bumps in the road called the Great Depression, the crash of 29, the COVID crash, 2000 bubble. These are bumps in the road over time. Do I think the market over time is going to go back up? Absolutely. Is this a, a, a trying time with a lot of challenges where people are suffering? Absolutely. You know, is are things on sale right now? And if we were to buy put together a shopping list and buy stocks that are companies that make money and look back at them in five years are they going to be higher probably so that's the best i can do so you think it's going to be a little bit more of a slow recovery and not really case recovery i don't know i think it's going to be choppy okay but when the market gets a hold of itself and we're able to get some kind of resolution with Russia, the nuclear confrontation, the labor market, and interest rates. Once all that is settled, this market's going to the moon. I believe so as well. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll drop a link down below where you can get check out my NFT. You can check out all of the merch. All the most important thing about it is that the utility is going to be 
educating the new 50 million degenerate retail traders on how to navigate this market successfully. I want you all been invited to this party. I want you all to trade this market successfully. There is no porn in loss. There's no honor in losing money. So join the good team. You said it. Thank you very much. You have a good one, guys. Enjoy. Bye. Giddy up on the Randy Chavez, guys.